to create the book for the type specimen um, book, we're going to go to new file. We're going to make sure we select print so that this is a CMYK uh, print document. Um, we're going to, just a second while I bring this in, go to inches. Document is going to be five inches by five inches, which means that this document will fit on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper with crop marks, which will make that nice and easy. Since it's square, it doesn't matter which orientation we have it in. We want to have facing pages turned on. We're going to go to 20 pages. Start on page one. I'm going to set this up as a two column document just for fun, um, but you don't have to do that. You could set it up as a one column document. Margins, uh, we're gonna reduce the margins and make it 0.375 all the way around. But then I'm going to break the lock and the side that I'm going to add the page numbers to, I'm going to make slightly larger. In my case, I'm going to make it um, put the page number on the bottom. You could also put it on the outside. Um, you could actually put it any number of other places, but those would be the two um, probably most used. And then for the bleed, we want to make sure that bleed is turned on. And we're going to turn that up one notch, uh, 0.125 or an eighth of an inch. And we can leave the lock on for that. So five by five in inches, make sure that's set in inches. 20 pages, facing pages. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, like I said, I'm going to make it two columns, margins 0.375, um, and then a little bit more on the bottom where you're going to put the page number, bleed and slug. Um, we just need to add the bleed, and that's 0.125. And we click Create, and we have a document that looks like this. And if we go to our Pages palette, you'll see that we have 20 pages. Um, If you want to get fancy, one option for how this is designed, this could be set up so that you have a wide margin and a narrow margin. And if you want to do that, I'm going to try. I can never remember how to do this, so it must be under object. Text frame options. I'm going to decide not to look for that right at the moment. Okay, anyway, so uh, we have a two column document. All right, next, what we want to do is so uh, we're going to set up page numbers and there's going to be automatic page numbering. You don't want to have a number one on your front page. This is actually considered in a document to be cover one, cover two. Um, oftentimes your cover will be on a uh, thicker stock. And so um, that thicker stock would be cover one, cover two, cover three, which is down here and cover four. We also have um, some sort of introductory material and that is usually numbered as lowercase Roman numerals. And so we're going to have a title page here. And we're going to have the table of contents here. 
And then this would also be a lowercase Roman numeral. And then we'd actually begin page one right here. So to do that, I'm going to click on page on this page one, and I'm going to go to layout and I'm going to go to numbering and section options. Automatic page numbering is turned on, but actually I could tell it to start page numbering at one. Set so, um, prefix is C for cover one and style is one, two, three, four. And I wanna include the prefix when numbering pages and I click OK. And so they're now all C1, C2, C3, C4. So we want to change this. So I'm going to double click on what is now C3. I'm going to go back to layout, numbering, and section options. Start page numbering at 1. And now the style is going to be lowercase Roman numerals. And I click OK. And now everything past here is now in Roman numerals. And so that's table, um, that's the title page, table of contents. And so we're going to start the number one right there. So now I'm going to go to layout, numbering, and section options, start numbering at one, style one, two, three, four, click OK. And you'll see that the page numbers through here are now all standard numerals. Then we get to cover three, double click on that, layout, numbering, and section options start page numbering at three in this case, section prefix capital C, include prefix when numbering pages, click OK, and now we have C3 and C4. So this document is now fully paginated. If I go to my parent page, and I create, let's see, first of all, I'm gonna create a guide to hang my page number from. And then I'm going to, in this case, just make great big text box, tell it to be centered up here. Um, I'm going to make this nine point, and go to type, insert special character, markers, current page number, like that. Um, I might also go to my paragraph styles, new paragraph style, um, page number, Click OK and set it so that's now page number. I can take this text box and Option Shift drag, copy of it over like that. Um, again, as we did with the magazine spread, I can create a layer, a new layer. Um, so we'll click on that layer and call it page numbers. Click OK and move the page numbers up there. And so they will now appear above any content that I add to the base layer. And if I go to my pages, you'll see I have C1. C2 and I, 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 
and then I have page one and so on. And so these all work properly. Finally, we want to not have page numbers showing up on our cover one, two, three, and four. So if you look up at the parent styles, so we added the page numbers to the A parent, and these are all marked as A parent. So I can now go and, but there is something called none. And so I can click on none and drag it onto A, onto C1. I can click none and drag it onto C2. You see those little A's go away and you'll see if I double click here that I don't have a page number or a page number there, but I still have a page number over there. Come to the bottom, drag none onto C3, drag none onto C4. And so those don't have page numbers either. So those are all, so this is all a properly paginated document. Okay, now I started a moment ago to try to show you how to move the column guides. I'm going to go back to my A parent, and I'm actually going to create a new parent, B parent. Click OK. And I'm here, and I'm going to go to View. grids and guides, and I'm going to uncheck lock column guides. And what I can do then is I can take these column guides and I can actually move them. And so I'm going to create an alternate design. Let's see. Move that. Come on. I'm resetting the position of the rulers. Um, the very outside is going to be at the three and a half mark. And that outside is at three and a half mark. So now I have an alternate version of this design. Um, there. where I've got a wide column and a narrow column. And then I could go and add that. Say I want to use that on page one. And I could just, and actually it's a good idea now to go back and go to grids and guides and relock the column guides so I don't accidentally move them. And I can go and take this B parent, drag it down onto page one. And now I have a spread that I've got a two column guide like that on the left page. And then the first page will be a um, narrower column and a wider column. So that's also an option for how to work with this device. I could also go and create a new parent. Click OK. And in this case, I have them both selected. And I could go to Layout, Margins and Columns. And I can change the columns down to one, click OK. And now I have an alternate version where I just have a single column. And that might be the one that I use for, say, the uh, title page. Because now the title page goes like that. And I can just one do one big text box 
uh, all the way across and I don't have to worry about the guides, not that you have to normally worry about them anyway, but um, it just makes for a cleaner representation. Um, so that is a whole bunch of things that one can do to set up your master template for your type specimen book.